The freaking group's takeover of Everton Football Club has said they collapsed. It looked as though they were going to take control of Farad Mashiri's 94.1% shares in Everton Football Club. However, after a period of due diligence, that deal is now off. We've got the statements here that Everton have put out. It goes as following. Uh, following a period of exclusivity between uh, Blue Heaven Holdings and the Freaking Group over a potential sale of a majority stake in Everton have ended and the Freaking Group will not be progressing with the purchase of the club. Uh, both Blue Heaven Holdings and the Freaking Group entered discussions in good faith to explore whether a sale could be agreed. Those discussions have concluded. The parties agree it's in the, both their interests for Everton to explore alternative options. The Freaking Group will remain a lender to the club and is proud to have played a key role in enabling the new stadium to be built, which is uh, which will help ensure a bright future for both Everton and the city of Liverpool. Uh, Blue Heaven Holdings maintains a positive relationship with the Freaking Group and would like to thank them for their time and effort they have put into this process. Obviously, this is a big blow because Everton and Evertonians, I think, were hopeful that this deal will get done as quickly as possible and we could move on with a new chapter for the football club. It's not to be. One thing I would say at this stage is I wouldn't totally rule out them coming back in and taking Everton over. Uh, this could be posturing, it could be a bit of negotiation, it might not be, but it's what happened when they bought Roma. When they bought Roma, they pulled out and then the deal went through a couple of months later. We'll have to wait and see. The other thing as well, I think for Evertonians to sort of maybe give them a slightly more positive slant on this is that when Farad Mashiri chose to go with the freaking group, there was other groups and consortiums interested, including Evertonians, AJ Bell and George Downing, who were, who were in with MSD, remember? Whether they're still a viable option, I don't know, but it wasn't that long ago they were, what, four to six weeks ago maybe? So they could come back to the table. Vici, another one, who were very interested in Everton with wealthy backers, they, they could come back to the table as well. So we'll have to wait and see whether that is the case. Right now, it's not great. One thing that has been, you know, the club have, have assured media, um, we've had the line from the club as well, that it is business as usual for this summer. It won't affect Everton's transfer plans. Everton will still be pressing ahead with their transfer plans and bringing players into the football club. And one thing that certainly won't be happening is there'll be a fire sale and, you know, selling Jared Brantway for cheap uh, doesn't seem to be on Everton's agenda at all despite a lot of uh, other journalists trying to peddle that line today, uh, trying to force unrest and, and see if Manchester United can get hold of Jared Brantwaite that doesn't seem to be the case, Everton as a business is uh, operating as business as usual and there's no cash issues right now with the football club that is what we're being told so we have to take that on face value uh, off the back of that, a story again has surfaced today linking West Ham United with a move for Everton striker Dominic Calvert-Lewin. The Everton forward was offered a new deal by the football club. He has chose not to sign that new deal. He currently has 11 months left on his Everton deal. Uh, it looks as though, or it looked as though he was about to move to Newcastle United in June. That didn't happen. Newcastle reportedly remain interested in him, as do West Ham United. And a uh, lot of stuff around Dominic Calvert-Lewin suggests that he's ready to move on from the football club. But we'll have to wait and see. You know, that could change as well. But right now, West Ham United uh, reportedly very interested in taking the England striker to London. Everton have played their first pre-season friendly of the season. They drew 3-3 with Sligo Rovers. Uh, the Blues had to come from 3-1 down in the game to draw 3-3. Everton had been behind before 2-0, before Mason Holgate pulled one back. Holgate then gave a goal away to make it 3-1. But Yusuf Chimiti struck twice in the last 10 minutes. Two well-taken goals, a little back flick off a Jack Harrison cross for the first of his two, and then a nice finish cutting inside on his left foot and bending it into the far corner to ensure that Everton didn't lose their opening pre-season friendly. It's ended 3-3. And what was he? A little bit like a de facto testimonial for Seamus Coleman, if you like, at Sligo. A lot of people turn up to see Seamus against this, playing for his uh, Everton, obviously against this former club. So, 
Listen, it wasn't amazing. It hasn't been an amazing day as an Evertonian, but we didn't lose and we scored three goals. So there's something to take into the weekend. We'll see you later.